what's up you guys welcome back to my channel if you're new here hi hello i'm lydia and if you are new here make sure you hit the subscribe button join the growing family we're aiming to reach 10k by the end of the year i know we can do it if we work together now today i'm going to be sharing my experience of abuse in psychiatric wards so go into it with that in mind if it's going to trigger you please click off this video <coughs> now I've had a lot of experiences in psychiatric wards over the last six years. So the first thing I want to talk about is actually not a psychiatric ward but an A&E department. They IM'd me with lorazepam and then ten minutes later they came and injected me with haloperidol. I wasn't kicking off or anything, I just didn't want to stay in bed. So that was the first time of being over medicated. Now over medicating is done as a way of controlling patients and just sedating them so they're easy to care for. This was done to me in a more recent admission when I was on a section 3 at the primary. I was over medicated then and I don't know why and it just happens so much in psychiatric ward. So many people commented on my last video where I talked about abuse of over medicating people and they said they'd been over medicated too. The first real bit of abuse that I experienced was restraint are you getting my set my head thrown back on the floor by one person no alarms pulled nothing she just whacked me she took kicks behind my legs and i just went backwards and i smacked my head off the floor Whee! so when it comes to abuse in psych wards, restraint isn't always done properly and it does result in abuse. I can safely say that has happened to me. <coughs> oh, I can't do this. So, I've witnessed abuse and I've been through abuse. If I keep leaning to one side, it's because I've got a really bad migraine right now. And it's literally killing me. But I want to make this video. As a psychiatric patient, I've experienced abuse that people in general hospitals don't experience. Now I have had my fair share of abuse in a &E, but that's not what I'm talking about today. Psychiatric hospitals are there to protect people from themselves, from others, detained under the Mental Health Act, informal, whatever it may be. We go into this place of care. Now I've had my head slammed on the floor, I've been kicked, I've been sedated, I've had bruises, I sprained my wrist, I've been through a lot. A lot of it happened in my year long admission and while I will say that admission changed my life, I also want to point out that it also traumatised me in ways that I can't explain. So for context, I was admitted on section 2, I was then transferred to section 3, my section 3 was renewed, I was in hospital for two years not two years, I was in hospital for a year. Now personally I think I was in too long. We have a handle, use the handle and close it carefully. The biggest event for me was when I had three staff members grab hold of my arm and they pin, pinned me down like that, hands above my head. Three members of staff doing a two member of staff job. Bit overkill. An example of where I got assaulted in hospital was I didn't want to go and eat lunch but my weight was dropping. And to get me out of bed, this support, off, support worker grabbed my cup of water and threw it over me. That's assault. It's just the little things here and there. Getting pinned down, getting dragged back onto a ward even though you're on leave. Getting told, oh, we're suspending your leave because you haven't eaten. I wasn't admitted for an eating disorder. I was admitted because I tried to kill myself and came very close. The amount of abuse that goes on behind closed doors is unreal. People getting restrained unnecessarily. No de-escalation techniques used. The emotional abuse. I've been told, oh you're never going to 
get ready a revolving door patient yeah I was for a while 2020 2021 yeah I was a revolving door patient because I needed help and support that I couldn't get in the community which is why I kept getting admitted under section for me to move area to a place I'd never lived before to be listened to Now, when I was admitted for the year, I don't actually remember having a mental health fact assessment. I remember it appealed, and my appeal failed. If you want me to make a video on what my appeal was, then let me know in the comments down below. But in, all in all, I was unwell. And being told, oh, you're a revolving door patient. Oh, you're never going to get better. Oh, you don't try. You're not working hard enough on yourself. All those things add up, and it's it's fucking emotional abuse. Now, I don't want people to go from the studio and think psychiatric hospitals are all bad. They're not the best, but in comparison to a lot of the, all around the world, such as America, the UK do have it better when it comes to psych wars. Now, psych wards aren't scary as a whole. People tend to keep to themselves in adult wards. You don't really make friends. I don't know. Now, When it comes to psych wards, they are, unfortunately, staffed by people who don't truly care. There are some staff members that are amazing and love their job and love helping people, and they're the kind of people who should work in psychiatric wards. But you can also get the agency staff who are there because they've got a phone call. And then you've got the staff members that are just there because they can take advantage of vulnerable people. I genuinely think psych wards need to be more selective when staffing these psychiatric units. The abuse I've been through in psychiatric wards is unstatable. I can't go into every detail at all because I'd have to press charges against some people. But honestly, some staff in there are dangerous. What I wish for people is that these places were safe. I... One example of the time I was abused. So before my camera very rudely got full up, thanks for that camera, Joy is a filming in 4K, it eats up memory like it's nothing. But we're just going to talk about something deep. Now, this story is quite a difficult one to talk about. So, I mentioned earlier about having a cup of water and everything, which this is, this is that story. So, I was lying in bed, I got called for lunch. I said I'm not going. Staff member walks in. Yes, you are. Throws a cup of water over me. I get up and push the staff member out of my room. And then I get thrown on the floor. Kicked. On, like, the side of the... Uh, right there. Glad that he broke a rib. 
he then proceeds to shove me back and shove me and shove me and shove me. The first time I'd got up off the floor. In the end I just went in my room and locked the door, which he had to get his keys out to get back in the room. And I said, leave me the fuck alone. And by then other staff had come up, seen what was going on. He got suspended. We then had a meeting where we had to clear the air. So me in this room, a mediator, I can't remember her name, and the male staff member that had assaulted me. I was like, Lydia, do you feel comfortable with him coming back to work? Me, no. So he was made to work on a different ward. Which poor fucking people, I mean, that's a. One, don't throw cups of water over people. Two, don't kick them in their side. Three, don't shove them back in their room. That was right at the beginning of my year long admission. So. say it made me fearful it was an understatement because I'd never experienced anything like that on an NHS ward. I do have two complaints against two different psych wards on the NHS. And this, that's all I've got for this video. Be careful wherever you end up. Thank you for watching and if you're new subscribe like I said at the beginning of the video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.